All right, so question number 12. It asks, how many atoms are contained in two points, sorry, how many oxygen atoms are contained in 2.74 grams of aluminum sulfate? Uh, I, I guess I should say oxygen atoms. So that's the question. What do we do? Well, okay, in any dimensional analysis process, what's the first thing that I always tell you guys to do? So here's the answer I was looking for, sorry. <laughs> is you almost always start with whatever value you're given that doesn't have denominator units. Now that's not always the case, but it almost is. So I'm gonna write down 2.74 grams of aluminum sulfate. And it is crucial when you're doing one of these that you write the units. Because the units will help guide you toward what you put next. So what I put next is of course a bracket, set of brackets. I eventually want to get to oxygen atoms. So I'm going to kind of have that in my brain. But pretending that I have no clue what I'm doing, what units are going to go in the denominator here? Grams of aluminum sulfate. So I'm going to write grams of aluminum sulfate. I have to write that super tiny so I can have room. Okay. Now, I have no idea what units to put in in the numerator. Is there any type of units that I can directly relate to grams of aluminum sulfate? Okay, so I can directly relate grams of aluminum sulfate to moles of aluminum sulfate, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to write down moles of aluminum sulfate in the numerator. Okay, I'm not going to worry about putting in new, uh, numbers yet. No numbers. I'm sorry that is so tiny. So I've got grams of aluminum sulfate canceling out grams of aluminum sulfate. I've got moles of aluminum sulfate in the numerator over here. So once again, clueless Mike, I have no idea what to put, but I can at the very least figure out what to put in the denominator. What should I put in the denominator? Units. Moles of what? Aluminum sulfate, right? So I'm gonna write down moles of aluminum sulfate in the denominator. You follow? Okay. We're eventually trying to get to oxygen atoms, right? Is there some way I can relate moles of aluminum sulfate to something that might get me closer? But yes, I can. But the same thing's true. If I've got a mole of atoms, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those atoms. If I've got a mole of molecules, same exact thing, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those molecules. If I've got a mole I, I was telling you guys earlier, if I've got a mole of donuts, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. If I have a mole of monkeys, I've got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd monkeys. That'd be a lot of monkeys. See what I'm saying? A mole is that number of whatever the heck you want. So I could put moles of aluminum sulfate and I could put molecules of aluminum sulfate in my numerator. That is not the way I was thinking about going, but it'll work. Okay, in the denominator now, what am I going to put units-wise? Dang right, molecules of aluminum sulfate. Sorry, molecules of aluminum sulfate. <laughs> now, I want to get to oxygen atoms. I want you to picture in your brain an, a molecule of aluminum sulfate. How many aluminum atoms does it have? I just got one molecule in my hand. It's got two aluminum atoms bonded together some way. How many sulfur atoms does it have? It's got three. I've got this three around these little brackets, so there's three sulfurs. And how many oxygens does each individual aluminum sulfate have? Yeah, it's got 12. Can I directly relate molecules of aluminum sulfate to atoms of oxygen? If I have one molecule of aluminum sulfate, I have 12 atoms of oxygen, don't I? So I can put oxygen atoms. Now I realize this is kind of a big hairy mess because I, I did this in portrait style instead of landscape style. I should have done it landscape and I would have had more room. No one's going to be able to read this crap. Okay, so let's just see if our units look good. Grams cancel out with grams. Moles of aluminum sulfate cancel with moles of aluminum sulfate. Molecules of aluminum sulfate cancel with molecules of aluminum sulfate. I'm left over with oxygen atoms. Now let's put in some numbers. Okay, moles of aluminum sulfate are moles of whatever in the heck, who gives a crap, how many molecules are there of it? 
Yes, thank you. Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd in one mole. So let's stop and ask ourselves, does that make sense? If I have one mole of aluminum sulfate, do I indeed have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of aluminum sulfate? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of aluminum sulfate. So that is a true statement. What about molecules of aluminum sulfate and oxygen atoms? Is this a true statement? Are there indeed 12 oxygen atoms in one molecule of aluminum sulfate? They're totally freaking are. Okay. Now, I should point out, you don't have to do all of this in one fell swoop like this, with like 16 different sets of brackets and units. I'm telling you, you can. But if you want, you could do just one set, get an answer, and then take that answer on and do another set if it's easier to do it stepwise. Anyway, okay, now let's look at this. Grams of aluminum sulfate and moles of aluminum sulfate. If I've got one mole of aluminum sulfate, how many grams do I have? And how in the world do I figure that out? Yeah, I add up the atomic weights of all the elements. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure this out. So I've got aluminum times 2, sulfur times 3, and oxygen times 12. How much does aluminum weigh? Is it 27? Okay, 27 times 2 equals 54. Sulfur weighs 32 times 3 equals 96. Oxygen weighs 16 times 12 equals 160 plus 32 is 192. Now let's add these suckers together. I've got 10, 12, uh, 6, 15, 15, 24. So I think that's 342 grams per mole. Okay. So every single individual mole of aluminum sulfate has 342 grams in it. So is this a true statement? One mole of aluminum sulfate has 342 grams? I realize that's super tiny and kind of squished, but it gets us exactly where we need to go. So now it is just plug and chug. Don't you love that phrase? <laughs> no. Okay, someone or everyone? Everyone! Calculate! <laughs> no, seriously, start plugging this crap in because I, I don't know the answer. Times 10 to the 22nd. Congratulations, that is correct. Can I show you guys, I know this might be overkill, but I want to show you one more way you could do the same problem. <clears throat> okay, so we started out by writing 2.74 grams of aluminum sulfate. And we naturally put grams of aluminum sulfate as our denominator units here. And we put moles of aluminum sulfate in our numerator here. On a previous problem, of course, we had moles of aluminum sulfate, moles of aluminum sulfate in our denominator in the next set of brackets. And in the numerator, you might remember, we had molecules of aluminum sulfate, which is a totally correct way to do it. It is not the way I was thinking at all, but it is a correct way to do it. It is a correct way. See, what I was kind of thinking in my brain was moles of oxygen. And I'll explain what I mean. If I have a single molecule of aluminum sulfate, once again, how many oxygen atoms do I have? I've got 12 atoms in a single molecule. Did you know that applies to moles as well? Straight across. If I've got one mole of aluminum sulfate, I've got 12 moles of oxygen atoms. Well, 12, 12 moles of oxygen, I guess. Yeah, kind of. I could write moles of oxygen, but I, then I, in, just for the sake of units, I would write down moles of oxygen in the denominator. So it, it doesn't really cut out a step, actually, because I, uh, and then I can write oxygen atoms. But then I throw in my numbers. We remember from a previous problem that one mole of aluminum sulfate weighs 342 grams. So there are 342 grams of aluminum sulfate in a mole of aluminum sulfate. Okay, we discovered that in one mole of aluminum sulfate, there are indeed 12 moles of oxygen. Then the next step is moles of oxygen and oxygen atoms. If I've got a mole of oxygen, how many oxygen atoms do I have? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which I told you is Avogadro's number and is also the name of a band I stumbled across on iTunes. I think their music sucked, I can't remember, but if you want to, check them out. All right, so you'll notice this is another way of doing it. It's slightly different from the way we did it. Rather than writing molecules of aluminum sulfate up here, I have moles of oxygen. But you'll notice that the numbers end up adding up. Uh, they're exactly the same. Yeah, different places and slightly different units. So this is the way I was thinking. 
totally correct, both ways. All right. One of my students was asking about problem number 13. I'm happy to do it. Problem number 13 says the total number of atoms in point 111, in point 111 moles of iron pH32. Okay. Okay, so number of atoms. Okay, when we're doing dimension analysis problem, what is Mike's suggestion that we do to start? Thank you. The unit, whatever value doesn't have denominator units. 0 0.111 moles, this is the only value they give us for this particular problem. Iron and all this stuff. Oh, then we're going to write some brackets. What is my, going to be my denominator unit in the next set of brackets? Moles of moles of this thing, which is really long. I have to take a nap when I'm done writing it. Okay. okay. We want to eventually get to atoms. And this question is really weird because it's just asking about total atoms. It's not asked at all about the specific atoms. It just says total atoms. Okay, so we'll write molecules of this stuff, the iron tricarbonyl triphenyl phos or diphenyl diphosphenyl. I don't know the name of that dang thing. Anyway, that, that's the guy. So there we go. So I can direct. Can I? Well, can I directly relate moles of whatever this is to molecules of whatever that is? How do I do that? Uh, avocados number. That's exactly right. I had some <laughs> avocados today. They were delicious. Okay. Next set, of course, the denominator units are going to be. Yeah, molecules of this stuff. So I'll go ahead and write that down. Molecules of this stuff. All right, so you want to go straight for the kill. Number of atoms on top. Is there a way, if I can imagine holding just one molecule of that in my hand, can I count how many atoms total there are in that molecule? Okay. Yeah, so I think, yeah. Yeah, so I can. I can put numbers here. Okay. Let's go back and put numbers here. I asked earlier, I got one mole of whatever this is. I have Avocadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, molecules of it. Are we cool there? Does that make sense? I got one mole of that. I got that many molecules of it. sha na na, -na That's what it is. Now, I want you to, I'm going to put the number one here. Imagine that I've got one single molecule of that. How many total atoms are in it? Let's, let's, I'm, I'm going to draw out the formula and see if we can count this garbage up and see if we can figure this out. So, total atoms. I got, I got one iron. I got three. Uh, you see, this three is basically timesing through the bottom. So I've got three carbons plus I've got three oxygens. Do you see what I'm doing? How many phosphor I phosphorus are do I have? I got two phosphorus How many hydrogens do I have? I got six. So I add all that up. One plus three is uh, four plus six is I think that's fifteen. So if I have a single molecule of that stuff in my hand, I'm holding fifteen individual atoms. There's a few different types of atoms there, but I'm holding fifteen different atoms. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this down here. I got one molecule of that stuff. I've got fifteen atoms. All right, 15 total atoms. Do I feel okay with that? Now, I want you guys to plug and chug. Times 10 to the 24th atoms. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks good. You guys are right. I have the answer key here so I can double check, but that is totally right. 